In this video, I'm going to actually start making the layout of our code editor. But before that, let me quickly launch the app and explain the structuring of the menu bar that we implemented in the previous video. So as you can see here, on the right, I have my layout code and on the left, we have the app. Now notice, as I move my cursor over the declaration of different elements in our code editor.html, the corresponding element is highlighted on the left side. So inside of the title bar, we have this div with an ID of menu bar and this menu bar contains the entire menu bar. On expanding that, notice how we got a UL tag. So this shows that all the options like file, view, edit, etc. are nothing more than a list. And if I expand any of the list items, you can see that it basically contains another UL tag, which then has submenu options. To conclude, both the menu option and submenu options are simply list elements, which are given different properties. You can actually see that when I expand the nested UL tag. And also notice that we have this one li tag with a class separator. This basically acts as a separating line. Okay, so that's it for the menu structuring. Now let's see how the code dynamically changes when I click over any one of those options. So let's say I click on this file option. Notice on the right suddenly a class called active menu is attached to the list item. This class basically contains the property that makes the background of the selected item darker. And then you can see that even the submenu ul tag changes and suddenly its display property changed from none to block. And the same thing keeps on happening with other menu items as well. Notice the changes when I do it all again. So as I click on the file menu options, you can see that the UL again receives some new properties. Its display changes from none to block. And the same things happen when I move my cursor to different uh, menu items. The same thing happens to all the ally tags. <clears throat> so you can see that as I move my cursor over different menu items, uh, a class called active menu is appended or actually added to those list items. All right, so now that we have seen the menu bar and how it works, now I'm going to launch the completed version of the project. And here you can see that the structuring of the layout below the menu bar. Here you can see that we have a coding screen div that contains everything. And then that coding screen div has three children. You can see that as I hover over each one of these respective divs, the area corresponding to that div gets highlighted. So coding screen has three children. The leftmost one is a div with a class explorer container and explorer container styles. Then the center one has a class called editor container, whereas the right one has a class called widgets container as it contains our widgets. So I'm going to go back to VS code and quickly make three divs inside of the coding screen, just like that, and give them classes explorer container, explorer container styles, editor container, widgets container, and also widget container styles. And just like I showed a few seconds ago. Now, in this video, I'm only going to be working on the contents present inside of the explorer container div. So the explorer container div again contains two children divs. First one has a class called files container and it lists all the currently active files. Whereas the second one has a class called folder files as the container basically lists all the contents inside of a specific folder. Now remember, the files container div will not have any predefined static data as everything is dynamic there. So I'm not going to be writing anything inside of that. But the folder files div does have some static data containers such as div which would contain the currently open folder's name and two buttons. Also, the div with the class folder files contains two direct children div elements. One has a class of folder title and this is basically heading of the folder files div and the second one has a class explored files, um, yes, explored files container and this one will not have any default content here. So let's focus on the folder title div. And instead of the folder title div, I'm going to create a div with an ID of folder name and then I'm going to create two buttons with IDs, sync files and change folder respectively, just like that. So let's reload the app so you can see that we now have a content. Um, actually, now we have some content just below our menu bar, but this content looks absolutely hideous. So I'm going to style them using CSS. Now I'm going to create a CSS file and name it snippet styles.css, just like that and I'm going to link it over here at codereditor.html. Now I'm going to need you to come over to snippetstyles.css. So I'm going to target the body element and I have some background colors ahead of time. So I'm going to write background 1c1f23. So now I'm going to create a class, actually target a class using dot coding screen and give it some properties like I'm going to set its display to grid, z index to 5 and grid template columns to auto 1fr auto. Now I'm giving it 3 uh, values instead of grid template columns because we know that coding screen will have three different divs. 
the left panel, the center panel and the right one. And the center one would have to take as much space as possible. So that's why we are writing one FR there. And then I'm going to target the div with the class Explorer container, give it a default width of about 215 pixels. And then Explorer container styles would have a background of 2D3, 239. And that's it. So uh, coming down, I'm going to target a div with class files container, color white, font family would be century gothic, white space, I'm going to set it to no wrap, and I'm going to set its overflow y to scroll and x to hidden. These are properties which you might not see any use of right now, but as we, you know, append more and more lists into our files container, you'll, you'll see why we need overflow y to be scroll and x to be hidden and all that. I'm also going to say max height to 250 pixels. Right below, I'm going to target the div with the class folder files and I'm going to write background 1c1 f23. I'm going to give it some margin top, bottom, left and right. Actually, I can just say margin 5 pixel, I guess. So um, I'm just going to write margin top 5, margin bottom 5, left and right. All of them to be 5 pixels. Give it white font color. Set its font family to century gothic. Give it a white space, no wrap, border radius 4 pixel. And again, overflow Y scroll, overflow X hidden. Now coming down to the folder title div, I'm going to set its font size to 15 pixel, padding to 10 pixel. And I'm going to set its display to grid and grid template columns to 1FR, auto and auto. You'll, you'll be able to figure it out why I did that. And then I'm going to target the divs with IDs, folder name and sync files. So first of all, let me just target the div with the ID folder name. So the way I do that is by saying hashtag folder name. Now this is the way you target an ID in CSS if you don't know that already and I'm going to set its display to inline block and then I'm going to come down and target the buttons with ID sync files and change folder just like that and I'm going to write display to inline block set the color to white border to zero border radius three pixel um, maybe cursor pointer padding of five pixel and font size of nine pixel I'm also going to set the outline to zero so that's how we have styled our buttons and then I'm going to come down and give them some uh, individual properties such as for the sync file button I'm gonna say font size to 12 pixel margin right 10 pixel and give it a background transparent now I want the background of the button to change as I hover over it so I'm gonna say sync files hover background 26282f all right and then I'm gonna come down and target the button change folder give it a letter spacing of about 1.1 and give it a background gradient so I'm gonna give it a linear gradient from the color 343f4c to 2b3038 okay and then just below i have this explored files container now this explored files container would have a display flex overflow y as a scroll overflow x as a scroll and then i'm going to set its flex direction to column and max height to 350 pixels actually you can just set overflow property to scroll instead of setting overflow y and overflow x to scroll individually okay so that's it now reload the project and you can see that everything changes and looks much better Although we don't see a folder name and a refresh icon, so for now, I'm just going to write some default values just like that and that's it. I think we are done for this video. In the next one, we are actually going to dive into the JavaScript part and that is where the fun actually begins. All those logics required in creating, saving, deleting, overriding, renaming and doing much more with files would make you feel really awesome. Because it did make me feel awesome when I was working on this project and figuring everything out. So that's it for this video I guess. If you want to follow this series, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also give a thumbs up if I showed you something new or exciting in this video. Also you can get more insights about what I'm working on by following me on Instagram. So see you next time.